oh, there's just so much in there. And I want to do a little plug, uh, if, if you don't mind, a little advertisement for my Bible study, because this might be the only week where the text we covered in the Bible study is the gospel text for the Sunday Mass. And so we went into this a little bit more in depth on uh, Facebook or probably on YouTube too. So if you want to watch my Bible study this week, uh, you'll get a little bit more. Plus you can listen to what other people say. What I get the most out of is not my own teaching, although just reading the Word of God is a real blessing. But what I get is when I ask everyone else, what do you want to take home from this study? What did God speak in your own heart while you were listening to this study or preparing it? What are you going to want to keep uh, in your own hearts? And they, everyone will share something. And from there, I'm just so blessed. I'm like, wow, I didn't even think of that. I'm going to take that too. I'm going to keep that too. So a little plug for the Bible study because even though it's the Gospel of Mark and this was the Gospel of Matthew, it's the same, same exact thing. And uh, uh, it's in uh, Luke as well. But um, just if you want to get a little bit more, go ahead and watch the Bible study as well. And put comments too. If you, watch, if you go through the Bible study, put your comments and let us know what you want to take away uh, from that study as well. It would be really cool for all of us to grow together and to learn together. Uh, this reading is, is so powerful for the, me this week. It's been working in me all week as I've preparing the Bible study, but now uh, that it's Sunday, I, it's working in me just in a very powerful way. Uh, because Jesus wants you to know that you can have super abundant grace, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Jesus wants you to know, like this song says, great things has he done, but he's called us to do even greater things because he's going to send the Holy Spirit among us and he's going to call us to do greater things, but mostly we don't do greater things. Mostly we fail like the disciples failed who followed him, and we see that in the readings today. And so what's the secret to the success of superabundant grace that Jesus calls us to today? The, the secret is simple. Listen. Listen. He says it over and over in the parables in Mark, and he says it here too. He says, he who has ears to hear ought to hear. It's all about in the way we hear. It's all about in the way we listen. And then he quotes Isaiah about those who don't hear. One time I was talking to Cindy, and I was just really impressed with this uh, 1 Corinthians 13 passage on love. Remember that one where Paul says, you know, if I speak with the tongues of men and angels, you know, that's great, but I'm going to show you a more excellent way. I'm going to show you the most excellent way. And then he talks about love. Love is that most excellent way. And it's really beautiful because it says love is patient, love is kind. It's not jealous or rude or pompous. It doesn't insist on its own right way. You remember that one? Uh, it believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Love never fails fails. All the disciples in, the, in these readings today failed. Love never fails, and love in us will never fail. And so as long as we're in love, we, we won't ever fail. But anyways, I was, I was reading that. I was caught up with it. I must have been doing a wedding because we read it at weddings a lot. And so I'm reading to Cindy. I'm all excited, and I looked, and she didn't seem as impressed as I was. And it occurred to me that an old man 2,000 years ago <laughs> in some Roman town who was a Jew wrote that. And I'm like, oh, oh, I get it. Some old guy 2,000 years ago wrote it. If a woman today wrote love is, what would she fill in the blanks with? What would you say love is? And she didn't hardly hesitate at all. She said, love listens. I'm like, whoa. Oh, I'm a man. I needed to hear that, right? Yeah, I didn't even hardly hear what else she said because I'm like, I better start listening. I better start listening to Cindy, but today Jesus says, I better start listening to God because he, God begins with the Jewish people. He says, hear, O Israel, hear, listen. And he, then he begins to talk to him about God. And in, in the Gospel of of Luke. Luke says, Jesus is the great prophet, so listen to him. And so he says, sinners were listening to him. The, the tax collectors were listening to him, but the scribes weren't. The Pharisees weren't listening. 
They were grumbling. They were doing just the opposite. They were grumbling. And so grumbling is the opposite of listening. And so what is going to give us super abundance in our life? How are we going to do greater things? Well, one, don't no grumbling. But two, big listening. Because with whatever measure you listen, that's the measure of abundance God is going to pour into your life. How cool is that? And so uh, once, uh, when my kids were little, my two boys, my oldest had moved out of the house, my two little boys, I wanted them to be able to really follow God, so I took them in my office, and I taught them how to listen. I taught them how to just sit in silence for five minutes and listen to God. And it was the most powerful thing I've ever done in my experience with them, because when we were all done, and I won't tell you the whole story, but remember that story? That room was really, really noisy. The furnace went really noisy, and then the monster truck pulled up outside the door, and then the, just everything about it was noisy. There wasn't any silence the whole time, and I just wanted silence for five minutes. I'm like, oh, really, God? And uh, so I asked my kids, 111, what'd you get out of that? And he said, I learned. I said, did you learn anything at all? I know it was really noisy. He said, yeah, I learned I could be in perfect silence with noise going on all around me. I'm like, whoa, he's way more advanced than me. I was just grumbling the whole time about the noise. And then the little one was only eight. I said, yeah, did you get anything? I didn't expect anything at all. He goes, oh my gosh. It was like I went to a whole other place. I was totally gone. I was in another dimension. I was, it was like me and God. I'm like, Whoa, if we listen, if we learn to listen, God wants to do great things in us. But he said, with what measure you listen, that's the measure God's going to give back into your life. So he wants us to open our hearts. He wants us to open our ears. He wants us to open up our eyes and be people who listen, for goodness sakes. That's why he spoke in parable, because no one was listening. So then I was at Powers as a chaplain up there, And I thought, well, they haven't done, I've talked to everybody, no one's doing adoration up here. I'm going to teach them how to do adoration. And we're going to do it for five minutes. We'll introduce it and we'll have five minutes of silence. And then I'll send them back to the religion classes and have them just write about it. What did you get out of it? Anything at all? What did you think of it? Every single one of them, I read all their journals. Every single one of them said, oh my gosh, that's the most powerful thing I ever did. I've never sat for five minutes and just listen before. I've never been in silence with God before. It's like I met me there. I thought for the first time in a long time, I met me there. I, I forgot who I was because I'm out too noisy doing everything, chasing everyone else around. And I met God there. Yeah, listening. Very, very powerful. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Deacon preached. He said, God's sending you out into the world and he wants you to be among the people out there. And you know what he wants you to do with those people? Listen. And so to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and love our neighbor as ourself, that's the commandment. And how do we love God? We listen to God. We take that time and effort to listen. And how do we love our neighbor as ourselves? We go out among them, and we listen. For the first time, someone's going to listen to them. Nobody's out there listening to God's people, to the people he's created. And they're all groaning like the second reading today, wanting somebody to listen. So listen. Number one, listen. Number two, in the parable, there's seed that falls on four different kinds of ground. Three of the seeds fail. Fail. And they fail in different degrees, but they're all total failures. One doesn't get any roots at all. No chance for any fruit because it doesn't even get roots. It just gets snatched up by the devil, snatched up by the birds on the path. The second gets a little bit of root, but it's in rocky ground, so it springs up right away. It's all excited. It's one of these emotional Christians, all excited. God, I want to serve you. I want to serve you. But as soon as something bad happens, they fall away. Yeah, that's Peter. Peter's like, Jesus, I'm going to go all the way with you to the cross. I'm going to be with you. I'll fight with you. I'll be with you. And he's like, yeah, right. You're going to deny me three times before you get a chance to do anything else. Yeah, Peter's name is Rock, and he's like the rocky ground. All the disciples uh, in the Gospel of Mark and Matthew, they failed in their discipleship. You ever fail in your discipleship? Don't worry about it. So did they. They did too. 
And so we're going to find in our lives all those kinds of grounds. We're going to be like that ground where the birds came and took it away because a lot of times we'll hear the Word of God and it just is wasted on it, is it, on us. It just goes right in one ear, out the other. Isn't that true? Or someone's talking to us, trying to tell us something, and it's just in one ear and out the other. We're not present. We're not listening, whether it's to God or to one another. And so we do all these failures. The third was uh, it took root. It had pretty decent soil, but it was in, among thorns. So it grows and grows and grows, but it bears no fruit. Every one of those was a failure. Every one of those was a failure of no fruit. And then the fourth soil. The fourth soil was good soil, and it grows, and it bears fruit. But it's really weird, because Matthew doesn't say, well, the first, you know, got gobbled up, and the second was on rocky ground, and the third was on thorny ground. Finally, the fourth got a little bit of fruit. A little bit of fruit came out, finally. Yay, we get a little bit of fruit in our life. No, he didn't say that at all. It's ridiculous what he says. He says, yeah, three total failures, no fruit at all, and one super abundant result. One super abundant result. 30, 60, 100 fold fruit. That's how it is in our lives. That's how it is for those who listen, Jesus says in John, the thief, the devil, he comes to steal and to kill and destroy. Three kinds of failures right there. He said, Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Have it abundantly. And so all these people come to Jesus to listen. Sinners come to listen. The uh, tax collectors come to listen. But in the Gospel of Luke, Pharisees don't listen. They grumble. And so they went to synagogue every single, every single Sabbath. Every Sabbath, they're there. Every Sabbath, they're studying the Word of God. Every Sabbath, they're following all the rules. They're tithing. They're giving alms. They're doing all the rules. They're doing all the observances. And they had no fruit. They had no fruit. We can do that. Because Jesus doesn't say, come to church every Sunday and you're in, Jesus says, listen. With what measure you listen, that's the measure you're going to bear fruit. Because we all know there's people who can go to, to church every single day. And it's like they've been baptized in lemon juice. They're like, it's like you go to church every day and you're like, mean. How is that even possible? That you grumble so much. That you don't have any fruit in your life. How is that even possible? And we've heard that saying before. You know, going to church doesn't make fruit come in your life anymore. It doesn't make you a Christian, right? Going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Right? Jesus is looking for Christians. Jesus is looking for people who bear fruit. And how do we bear that super abundant fruit that Jesus is looking for? Super abundant listening. St. Therese tells us, she said, listen to this, if God speaks into your heart and you do it immediately, God will pour grace on you. Cool. Okay, that's cool. He said, but then he's going to speak in your heart three more times. And if you do that, he's going to triple the grace he pours on you. And he's going to speak in your heart ten more times. And if you do that, He's going to give you so much grace you won't be able to measure it. Yeah, yeah. The gospel today says, you know, if you listen, if you listen, God's going to not just give you grace, but he's going to give you even more. He's going to add to it and add to it and add to it. It's like the rich get richer in this case. Let me close uh, with this idea. You are out there sowing seeds all the time, too. We are always out there sowing seeds with our life. And so there's this beautiful story about uh, Boris Yeltsin. Remember him in Russia? And he changed his world. And someone said to him, who's your inspiration? Where did you get the inspiration to change the Soviet Union into a free Russia? And he said, Lech Walesa. That man inspired me. That Polish, you know, factory worker, all he did in Poland, that was inspiring. That's my inspiration. Someone asked Lech Walesa, 
What? Who is your inspiration? How did you do that? How did you turn Poland around from communism to freedom? And he said, Martin Luther King Jr. He was easily my biggest inspiration. Just all that nonviolent revolution. He changed his world. That's my inspiration. Martin Luther King Jr. Someone asked Martin Luther King Jr., what is your biggest inspiration? He said, easy. Rosa Parks. She refused to sit in the back of the bus. She was my inspiration. A little lady in nowhere in Alabama or wherever she was planted a seed. And it went through Martin Luther King and got bigger. And it went through Lequalensa and got bigger. And by the time it hit Boris Yeltsin, the whole world was changed by one little seed that one little woman placed. These are times of change today. God's sowing seeds of change, and we want those to be good seeds, your seeds that you sow. We're called to do even greater things even greater things. You're called to the principle of sowing seeds. Sow seeds. It's all about listening. And it's all about sowing seeds in our world that are going to make our world into the kingdom of God. We are called for greatness. We are called for such a time as this. And this is our time. This is our faith. And what a wonderful faith we have.